Um, Mike Andrew, Toronto Sun. Um, yesterday, Skola mentioned that, that he came up with, I don't know if it's his idea, but talked about maybe extending, expanding this and going, making it worthwhile and going maybe play, bring four teams over, play three games instead of one. Just wondering what you think of that idea. First of all, we're going to get him a job in the league office with that pro all those proposals. But, I, you know, again, I, I'm, the older players have been through this. He's been over. He's playing the Euro League. I'm sure he has some great ideas, and I hope he you know, can share them with Kim and some of the people in NBA offices. Nothing negative about that. It's all positive. Um, you know, like I said, Luis is one of the um, elderly statesmen of our league. He's seen it all, done it all, and it could have some uh, relevance to it. Front row here on the right, in Hi. glasses. Teriş Gökson, mm -hmm. NBA Gün, Air Turkey. Do you think it's better to play more than a single game when you make such trips out of the States? No, it, you know, it is what it is. You know, it's, it, you can look at all the positive, and I choose to look at the positive. The glass is full. We're here. we got to take advantage of it. Uh, we had a couple of good practice days out of it. We play Orlando Magic. I'd rather just be here for vacation, but we got to play them. Uh, they're a very hard-playing, hard-charging team that beat us. The last time we played them. So, uh, again, uh, you know, one game, two games, three games, it doesn't matter. It's, it's what the NBA schedule says. We're here for it, and uh, we got a, we got a job to do. <clears throat> On the left here, third row. Hi, Coach Mamutsi from Slant News. Uh, this season, Demar Derozan has cut down on his mid-range attempts and leads the league in points scored and drives to the bucket. Is there something that you put into the offense, or is it a focus that he's made himself? Well, it's part of our our offensive philosophy: attack the rim. You know. Cut down in the mid-range. You know all the analytical numbers tell you to cut down the mid-range shot. Uh, subsequently, he's probably one of the best mid-range shooters in the league. So you just can't throw the baby out with the bathwater with him. So uh, you know he's got to be able to take it. Uh, but again, mix in getting to the rim. He he's increased his three numbers. He's worked on his threes every year. Uh, at some point, he's going to become a three-point shooter. And uh, when that happens, he's going to be uh, even more special than he is. First row on the right. Coach Davide Finellato, NBA Italy. Uh, how important is for the Raptors to be Team Canada in terms of fans pushing for you to have success? It's huge. It's huge. We're the only team in the country. It's our brand. Uh, you know, we kind of put ourselves, you know, we're the stepchildren. We're kind of the only team out of the country. We don't mind that. We, the North, uh, you know, came up with a great slogan. Our marketing department did. So we're proud. We're proud to represent Canada, be a part of that. It's a, Toronto's a great city, as some of you will see once you come to the All-Star Game. Uh, second to none, sports city, you know, restaurants, a whole nine yards. So we're proud of that. And, uh, you know, just don't bring the traffic to, to Toronto. That's the only thing. But, uh, you know, we love the city. We're proud of it. And I think our players embrace it once they get there and get to know it. Uh, sit and get a feel for the fans, uh, not only in Toronto, but all across the country of Canada. Again, right hand side, third row. Uh, first game, Tobias Harris was quite impressive, scoring 20 points. For tonight's Nolivari Carroll, would you put a more James Johnson probably on him, or what do you have in mind first? Well, we got to do it by committee. We got to do it by our team effort, uh, team comp team concepts. I don't think I don't believe in the one on one so called matchups. You know they play them, but again, it's it's five on five, and in our defensive schemes, there's a help. You, everybody should know where the help is coming from. So we got to make a special um, special mission as far as to say to know where he is, how he is, because. Not only last game, he's played well against us in every contest we've played against uh, Orlando in the last couple of years. So we got to know where he is. Everybody's got to do a job on him individually and collectively. Left hand side, fourth row. Um, hello, I'm Yann Onana from Newspaper L'Equipe. Mm -hmm. uh, friends, I'd like to go back to DeMar DeRozan and ask you if you could tell us a little bit about uh, the evolution of his game and why he's so good right now and making his best season. Well, five years ago when we first got together, he was a young athletic wing guy, uh, volume shooter, uh, known as a volume shooter around the league. Every summer, DeMar has made a commitment to get better, work on his game, uh, whether it's three-point shooting, ball handling, handling the pick and roll, passing out of the double team, passing out of the pick and roll, uh, defensively moving his feet, getting a lower uh, center of gravity with his defensive stance. So all those things every summer he's worked on. Um, and still, there's, there's, there's still room to grow for him. And uh, he's a student of the game. He works at it. Uh, it's not by just osmosis. He's put his time in. Last summer, he worked with James Harden. I think that has created uh, him learning how to get to the free throw line even more. 
Uh, those two are their best friends in L.A., so uh, they work together. And I think that's helped him, you know, understand how to create contact, create the defense of, of, of committing themselves to him, with, whether it's with reaching or whatever it is, and then getting uh, a foul from that. So uh, he's a student of the game. He's grown every year we've been together, and uh, I'm proud of him. And, and uh, again, he's not through yet. Right-hand side, second row. Luke Hatfield, Bouncy Orange Ball. You mentioned the NBA All-Star game. With events like this doing so well, do you think there's scope for that to one day come over here? One more time. One more. Repeat the question. Uh, with the NBA All-Star, mm -hmm. um, with events like this doing so well, do you think there's scope that it could eventually come over here? Well, again, that's above my pay grade. Uh, I'm not going to venture out like Luis did and say what the NBA needs to do, should do. Uh, I don't see why not. Uh, the global brand of the NBA is all over the world. Uh, it's one of those things that it's grown in my years in the NBA since the early 90s. And, uh, you know, no one would ever conceive of having an all-star game back then in Europe or Asia or wherever. But today, the way the league is now, why not? I mean, so I don't think players would be opposed to it. I think it would be a, a, a good thing, a good thing for the league. And, the more we can grow our brand, not only as the NBA, but also for the Toronto Raptors, we're all for it. Staying on the right-hand side, first row. David Skoks on NBA in Turkey. How will you be studying the game tonight? How would I be studying the game? Yep, same. How will I be studying the game? Trying to kick Orlando's butt. I mean, that's the only way I can, <laughs> easiest way I can put it. Uh, but again, we have some things we want to do. We got to defend. We got to do a good job on Harris. Not only Harris, Vucevic didn't play last game, so he's going to be a handful of us. So we got some things in we want to look at to as far as keeping him under control. You're not going to stop him completely, uh, but we want to just break his rhythm in the low post. So there's a lot of different things defensively we want to do. And offensively, we got to be physical. We got to play physical offense. Uh, hey, Dwayne, it's Michael from NBA Australia. Uh, I was wondering, when you got Corey Joseph from San Antonio, uh, was it expected that he'll be playing so much in crunch time? Was that something that was planned in preseason or just kind of happened over no, time? No, it was planned. We saw Corey as a growing player. He's still a young player uh, within the NBA. He's getting accustomed to playing those big minutes at the end of the game that, uh, and then have the responsibility that he didn't probably have in San Antonio. He's so used to throwing it to Timmy and, and to Tony and Gin Ginobili and getting out of the way. But uh, for us, he has a lot of responsibility on defense and offense, and that's part of his growth. He's an excellent young student of the game. Uh, there's a lot of upside. He's still not a finished product also because he's such a young kid, and we're excited to have him. He's a, he's a Canadian, so he represents everything that uh, you want young players to watch from a young kid uh, grassroots standpoint. Uh, so uh, there's so many positives of having Corey on our team, and we're excited to have him. Staying on the right-hand side in the black shirt. Dario Vismara, Italian NBA magazine. Uh, what's the reasoning behind uh, allowing or so encouraging Luis Scola shooting trees, which is something that he hasn't done in his career? Well, over my years, I've always had seen players and had players who, once they get older, they add something to their game. Detlef Shrimp in Seattle, Sam Perkins in Seattle. Both of them became excellent three-point shooter the older they got. Um, you know, I, I think that's something he's added to his game. We allow him to do it. We want him to do it because he can stretch the floor with our first unit. Uh, it's just a positive, and he's, he's worked at it. And that's something that he's in, I would encourage all young players to do. There's always room for improvement. You know, even Luis at his, his stage of his career has added the three-point shot to his career, and we encourage it. And he's one of our better three-point shooters. Second row here on the Left. Hi, James Parr, Raptors HQ. Um, with Larry's production slipping a little bit in the second half of last year, what are you doing to kind of ensure that doesn't happen again well, this year? Well, stay injury-free. You know, people talk about all the, the knockoff and the lack of production. You know, he wasn't 100% after the All-Star break. It was a nag injury here, a, a strain here, a strain there, a strain back, a strain calf. So he just fought the injury bug the whole second part of the year and went into the playoffs with that. So. Health is so important in this league. Luck is important. Uh, so hopefully health and luck both, you know, stay with him uh, throughout the, and all of our players throughout the rest of the season. 